Bye guys, Flashcast by PDB. Today's topic I want to talk about is about how to implement and manage organizational change. Something I get asked a lot about, especially growing a company from zero startup to the largest in the country of its type, from obviously a team of one being myself to a team of over 100 staff. So of course the organizational changed many times and I had to manage and implement that change and so I just want to discuss a few tips on how to go about it that, that really helped myself. The first part is that obviously change must involve people. Um, it shouldn't be imposed on people without their involvement. Um, they've got to be committed to it and they've got to agree to it. If you can't get your team to agree to the change, it's not going to happen. Um, I don't believe um, in organisations going about trying to make change without involving its people. It doesn't work. Uh, and one thing I made sure at Debella is that I always involve the team. Now, involving the team doesn't mean that I always have to listen to them or, or abide by their rules, but what it does mean is that they're part of the the um the journey they're part of the solutions they're part they feel emotionally engaged with the organization because i've kept them across it and involved and let's face it i'm not the smartest person in the room and that the fact that i've got access to great people around me i need to use them so that we come up with better ideas so the first part is always in change must involve your people you must have them part of it and you need to be able to motivate them motivate them to be involved and embrace the changes and the ideas i always talk about community communication audits, um, ensuring that the team is communicating right. So we used to do one once every two years to make sure that um, things were going well. So if you have never done one or you're um, running an organisation or you own an organisation or you're part of an organisation, make those suggestions about communication audits. Number two, get the right people in the right seats of the bus. I talk about it a lot. It's, you know, people are so one-dimensional when it comes to hiring and I believe in making sure that firstly you identify the seat of the bus. What are the skills? What are the attributes? What are the personalities um, of the people that you need on that seat of the bus? And then go and choose the right person for that seat. Unfortunately, I see a lot of people in organisations today trying to match roles and jobs to the person. Unfortunately, it happens a lot in government where people get promoted out of jobs. And so we end up with people in high-ranking jobs because they've just been promoted out of their job to get rid of them, uh, which we know how bad that that goes. So um, two is all about get the right people on the right seats. You know, it's all about knowing what the organisation needs first and then identifying the right people that can sit there. Remember, you need a right, you need a mix of skills. You need the right mix of skills in order to make a team work. You know, strikers aren't defenders and defenders aren't strikers, but if they don't work together, you lose a soccer game. You need to make sure that everyone's, you know, got the right skills and the right the right and sitting on the right seats if you don't it's not going to work three is all about understanding where the organization is currently and where it wants to get to so obviously as i was growing to bella i had to understand where i was and what i could afford and how much i could pay people uh, and what the, what i needed but then i also needed to know where it went so what i made sure is that i always employed people when i didn't need to and whilst that cost me more it meant that I had the luxury and the time of choosing the right person for the right seats of the bus. I didn't hire people once I needed them because this caused problems. And a lot of times I moved people around within the organisation to sit on the right seat of the bus because of the skills that they had, because of where they'd come through the organisation and knowing it. So part three is understanding where the organisation is currently and where it wants to get to. You need to provide valid business reasons for change. You need to make sure that you, there is quantifiable reasons why you're making changes, why you are moving people around. You know, And people need to understand this. Communication um, is, is the key. Without it, it's not going to happen you know when you develop strategic plans you need to make sure that you're sitting down and getting the people around the table and understanding where you are and where you want to go then you've got to make sure you've got the right people sitting around the table and then you need to make sure that you're listening to them so you see how these all start to work together Four is all about plan for change. You know, so many organisations just want to change at the drop of a hat. They, you know, they want to pivot, they want to move, they want to change direction so quickly that they haven't planned for it. You need to set measurable steps to achieve the overall goal. You have to break it down. It's all about the 20-mile march, making sure that you know where you want to be um, and then truncating it down into steps that everybody can keep up. You need to have, in, you know, timeframes and measures of success. What does success look like? You need to celebrate their success. You need to remove potential blockages that may hold up the changes. If you're not doing this, then you're not you don't have a good plan for change. This will also help you with, obviously, time management and people management. If you have a plan, people can emotionally engage with it. So don't try and change too quickly 
unless you have the plan that allows you to change quickly. Five is change needs to be, you know, embedded and it needs time. You can't embed things. They say 21 days to make or break a habit. So if you're changing, you know, 10 things and it's each thing takes 21 days, it's 210 days. It's 21 days to break, make or break a habit. You need time to embed change. You need to communicate the benefits of change across the business when they occur so that people are engaging. You need to facilitate the involvement from people within the business so that, you know, change can happen and time for it is encouraged. And you need to make sure that you encourage persistence throughout the changes because people are always going to go to that initial, you know, their initial fallback will be to resist change. Yet we change every day, hopefully. We change our underwear, we change our clothes. Change is not what we're scared of. It's the not being part of the change, not being emotionally engaged with the change and not understanding where you're going and why you're doing it, not having enough time to change. These are the things that scare people. So in recapping, right, you need to change must involve people. It's all about people. You'll hear me say it over and over again. We're in the people business. It's connecting people to a product or service. That's what we do. You must involve people when it's about change. You've got to get the right people on the right seats of the bus, not have people shuffed around or well, positions shuffed around to suit people. The right people on the right seats of the bus. Three, understand where the organisation is currently and where it wants to be. Have a clear vision, communicate the vision constantly and reflect back on that vision and celebrate your successes. Four, plan for change. Make sure that you plan, 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 plan. Have measurements in place, timelines in place of where you want to go, what you want to do, and make sure you're celebrating them. And five, remember, allow the right time to change. If you do this, then change within your organisation will happen. It'll be successful. Everyone will be the best that they can be. Guys, until next time, thank you.